food is essential for all. When there is no food, there is hunger in the land. And where there is hunger, everybody is affected. In the 1960s, Nigeria had a booming agricultural sector, which made the country popular for a agrarian economy. Agriculture contributed up to 38% to the nation's GDP as of 2002. However, at the discovery of oil, the nation gradually became a massive importer of food for our people. The global recession in 2008 and the country's slide into recession in 2016 had a tremendous impact on the country's economy as crude oil had become its major source of foreign exchange. Post-recession, the country has become more intentional in diversifying our economy with a major focus on agriculture in order to bolster food production and supply to meet up with the food security demand of our over 200 million population. When you are talking about agriculture, seed is the beginning of agriculture. If you get this right from the seed sector, the agricultural sector will be gotten right. As you will know, when Nigeria became independent, it had a very thriving agricultural sector. We really have no business okay, being poor or being unable to feed ourselves. Agriculture uh, supposed to be the highest earner of foreign exchange. There was no problem of sales of uh, agricultural products. We have what we call a marketing board. Whatever you produce, you can sell through marketing bird. There's the cocoa marketing bird, where you can get your cocoa sold through cooperatives. As a strategic approach to revamp the agricultural sector and bring life to the country's green economy, the federal government set up the National Agricultural Seed Council, among other initiatives, to create a thriving market for high-quality seeds to enhance agricultural productivity, increase food security, and improve the livelihood of rural farmers. We headed to Guaguarada in Abuja to find out how the council intends to boost food security in the country and its effort to make this a reality. The council as an organization do not produce seeds, but we should pretend over the sector we, uh, we, we accredit seed enterprises that does the production, distribution, and the rest of it. So we are regulating the industry. One of the key issues we are uh, trying to solve is the, you know, the yield gap. Uh, uh, yield in Nigeria and most of the sub-Saharan and Africa is uh, the lowest around the world and uh, we in the Seed Council have seen that uh, this is something we need to uh, change. We need to change the dynamics, we need to usher and advocate for the use of better quality seeds that can, you know, give us better yield than what we are getting now. Uh, modestly, you plant rice, we are expecting two, three tons, the IS 3.5, but in Asia and other parts of the world where they grow rice, they get it 9, 10, 11, 12 tons. So with uh, improved quality seeds, our farmers having access to seed and good agricultural practices, we know we can, you know, double our yield. So basically our primary function, we stand as a third party guarantor. We guarantee what the seed companies and seed producers are given to the farmers or the seed users. So it's our duty to ensure that what goes between the seed producers and our seed companies to the farmer, it's genuine. Our watchword is quality. We can't just, we don't, we have to protect the interest of the farmers. That is it. When farmers plant good quality seed, there is definitely going to be bumper harvest. A seed council here, we have that mandate of advising the research to breed according to the need of the, uh, of, the, of the farmers or market. In 1981, agriculture contributed 12% to the nation's total GDP. In 2002, it contributed 38% to GDP. This figure started to dwindle after the global recession, dropping from 26% in 2008 to 20% in 2014. 
Since then, it has maintained a constant 21% contribution to the country's GDP. Nigeria has a total land area of 910,770 square kilometers and of these, its agricultural land stands at 708,000 square kilometers. Of this lot, the country boasts of 37.33% total arable land. This makes Nigeria a perfect agricultural hub to meet up with local and international demands for cash crops, livestock, forestry, and fishing. According to data by the Central Bank of Nigeria, of these four subsectors of agriculture, crops have consistently contributed the highest, hence an integral part of a move towards the sustainable intensification of agriculture in Nigeria as well as increasing opportunities for rural development and food security. The use of genetically improved crop varieties and institutional development are among the practical and achievable activities to meet up with Nigeria's intended green economy. Nigeria is producing between 60 and 70 percent of quality seed that is being used in West Africa. And uh, we are the leaders in West Africa. We are becoming a maker of a sort for West Africa. Countries in West Africa that want to put together their own seed council have been visiting Nigeria, visiting the Sea Council, Ghana came here, uh, Gambia was also here, and uh, we are doing all this in order to ensure that we provide good quality seeds, not only for Nigerian farmers, but farmers across the West African subregion. However, in time past, farmers had some challenges in terms of increasing their yield, which served as an impediment to foster commercial agricultural practices. To understand firsthand the challenges faced by some farmers, we took a road trip to Kujay Area Council in Abuja. For the past 10 years, I have been in this profession farming because I of the passion I have for agriculture generally. And uh, my experience is that the once the seeds have been planting, they are mere greens. I buy from the pig farmers who sell it in the open market. That I discover the Amir grains. These are no seeds. Bako then takes us on a tour of his farm to show us some of the virus infestations farmers are also besieged with. This we are seeing, we call it Stigal homotica. We have two major types. This is for grains, cereals. Majorly, it's this with cereal crops. We have the Stigal gener generoides, which deals with the legumes. But here, it is not prevalent here. Mostly this is what we have. And the causes of it is for long overuse of land. This land has been under cultivation for more than 50 years. As a result of that, these weeds have manifested. And you know, this insecurity we are having now does not allow farmers to rotate their lands as it used to be in shifting cultivation of the olden days. As such, these weeds are a serious threat to the farmers. We then headed to Zaria, taking a two-hour train from Idu train station in Abuja to Kaduna, and then a one-hour, 30-minute road trip to Zaria to speak with some farmers and seed producers. Can't help being captivated by the large expense of cultivated land here in the north of Nigeria. People still find it difficult to differentiate between seed and grains. If you plant grain and seed, they will all germinate and they will all grow. The problem is what you get in the end. Seed is supposed to have certain quality that is going to produce higher than the uh, the, the green seed is supposed to have certain quality that probably will be resistant to some diseases and pests that you have. Seed is likely to be tolerant to less rainfall or whatever. So, seed has some other qualities that you can quote. 
And what has contributed to this, I will say partially, is the extension system that had broken down. Uh, in those days, I'm a product of extension service, and those days, there are extension people, once new varieties are out, new crops are out, that will go to the farmers, teach them uh, the difference between the old and the new. But now, uh, Nigeria is in their need of good uh, extension service that can be there. Once in a while, we have different diseases. There is one particular pest that infects Guinea corn and makes it fume. I heard they call it Stembora. To address these challenges, the Nigerian Agricultural Seed Council created technology forward testing laboratories where seed producers, as well as farmers and seed companies, can submit their seeds for due verification and detection of possible dangers if planted in the field. Depending on the seed variety, these tests may take up to 14 days for data gathering and intense in-depth work on the path of the researchers to find defaults in the seeds. Here is the seed health unit of the lab. The first step is to check for the physical appearance of the seed. Some of the microorganisms might express themselves on the seed and some you cannot see them with your naked eye. So we want to know the condition of the seed when the seed was brought into the lab. So we'll do the dry seed inspection where we'll assess the seed. Is there any discoloration on the seed? Is there any insect infestation on the seed? Is there any hole? Is there anything that is different from the original seed? Whatsoever you see on the seed, you document them. This is the Molecular Diagnostic Unit of the National Agricultural Seed Council. What we do here is basically we deal with virus as a detection of virus. We use a diagnostic tools in the detection of the viruses that might be affecting. Basically, we deal with the health status of the samples on the field. We want to know what and what causes the, the infected plants on the field. We don't just want to assume as we know that most of the diseases, they exhibit some same uh, symptoms on the field. So we don't want to guess, we don't want to say, okay, this is this. We still want to know further, is it virus, is it bacteria, and is it fungi? In germination test, actually, you cannot be able to determine the dormancy of a seed. Some seeds comes up and the other one don't. So for you to know if actually they are um, alive or actually they are dead seed, you have to run this test, the uh, viability test to determine the dormancy of the seed. Scientifically, if one wants to have an, an, an information about the varieties given to him, the only way one can know is through research. So what we are doing here, we are trying to kind of carry out evaluation trial to know which variety among what we are a kind of growing is the best in terms of yielding. And at the same time, we also carry out the threat behavior of the varieties to know the differences in terms of growth level. The aim of germination tests is to determine the germination potential of a seed lot as well to compare these different seed lots in their quality and the planting value in the field. The procedures we normally use will follow International Seed Testing Association, which is ISTA. That is what we normally do. And the substrates we use here is sand and paper. We normally use the river sand because it is free of nutrients. If these test plants can strive well in sand, that means over there in the field, they can strive well. When you want to store your seeds, you must store at a particular moisture level. Because, for example, I was talking about aflatoxin. It's a very dangerous toxin that had been produced by uh, microorganism, fungi, aspergillus flavors. And when the moisture is high, it provides an enabling environment for this microorganism to thrive. And once this infests your seeds, believe me, you cannot even plant it. You can't save it because it will destroy it completely. So these are all the things that we check for. Although rigorous and well-researched tests of this nature help farmers and seed companies determine the quality of their seeds, there were other issues regarding seed falsification which affects seed companies as well as adequate funding for researchers. 
as far as we are concerned, we have had our own share of seed attrition. It is not what we wish for, but it has affected us in different ways. One, all we have been saying doesn't give confidence to the farmer that there's a difference between a seed company selling seed and any other one. And also it gives you bad name. You because we put your name and it. So they fake in different ways. Uh, some of the complaints we've gotten over time, it's seed counterfeiting and then faking of seeds, faking of our seed tags and then faking of seed bags. So now you find a situation whereby the the blue tag which goes with our certified seed, these are these tags, the farmers are supposed to look at it and say, okay, these seeds has passed through the quality assurance processes of the seed council. And so they are buying these seeds with confidence that these seeds will do well in the field. But um, unfortunately, we've had cases where unscrupulous elements, they fake, this, they fake these tags and then put on seed bags and then unsuspecting farmers, they buy. But then, because the seed tag cannot communicate with the farmer, so they don't know how to, you know, so they cannot communicate. To resolve the adulteration, the National Agricultural Seed Act of 2019 was signed into law by the federal government of Nigeria on the 24th of June 2019. The Act, an initiative of NASC, is mandated to ensure circulation of adequate quality and quantity of seeds in Nigeria and across West Africa and other regions through the certification of enhanced seed varieties. It's a very important gift and uh, I think the farmers should appreciate Mr. President for this because uh, signing the Seed Act has given the council more uh, leverage and you know power to do some things we cannot do before. Uh, the council's manpower is not uh, you know unlimited. We have limited manpower and we cannot police the whole seed industry. So uh, we are now with the signing of the bill able to introduce what we call third party uh, certification where we accredit people, we train them, we give, tell them what to do and uh, they can you know, do the job where we cannot reach in communities, we can find agreed teachers, university uh, professors, give, accredit them as our license inspector, they do the work, our officers, we audit them. It means we can cover more ground and you know, ensure that quality seed is in circulation. It also allows us, us to deploy technology, you know, into coordinating the seed system. So we have innovations like the seed tracker, the seed codex coming in. It also, you know, give us room to also make uh, push for the PBR law because mention was made of the need to have a plant breeders uh, right law in Nigeria. Uh, it also, above all, you know, have uh, stiffened penalties for uh, offenders of the seed law. Because before now, if you are caught infringing on the seed law, you are selling fake seed, uh, you are counterfeiting seeds, the fines, it's 500 naira when you are taken to court and you are sentenced to six months imprisonment. But with the new act, it is one million for a first offender and uh, one year imprisonment. And when you are a second offender, it's two million naira and two years. So this we feel will serve as more deterrent to those who are, you know, uh, doing unscrupulous business of uh, defrauding farmers. So the Seed Act is a, uh, is a welcome development. It has also, you know, looked into the harmonized regulation to put, you know, Nigeria in a better position to implement the ECOWAS seed rules and regulation. The Council also partnered with international bodies to catalyze an inclusive agricultural economy and integrate technological solutions to resolve the issues faced by these farmers and seed companies. With the dwindling government funds, there is an obvious need for these collaborations to foster more commercialized agronomic practices. We are collaborating with a number of agencies and uh, bodies who are collaborating with AGRA, with uh, Bill and Miller Gray Foundation, uh, particularly in the, the basics. Basics means building a sustainable and integrated cassava seed system. Uh, we are collaborating also with uh, BMGF, particularly in the USWA Yam Improvement for Food Security in West Africa. USAID, uh, UK Aid, Rockefeller Foundation, and a number of them, uh, ones we are collaborating with. Even there are countries that 
are collaborating with us, the Netherlands, and uh, we are collaborating with Hungary too. And a, lot of, a number of other countries are actually collaborating with us. We are working with the State Council to help it achieve its mandate. The main mandate you know, of the National Agricultural State Council is to serve as the reg oversight institution okay, for the uh, Nigerian seed sector. So it's responsible, you know, ramification, looking at, you know, how uh, do you have a very efficient seed sector that's able to deliver value for the smallholder farmers. The partnership brought about the introduction of high technological approaches and initiatives, which include the Seed Codex, Seed Tracker, and PVP, which is the Plant Variety Protection. Seed Codex with our Seed Tracker, the National Seed Tracker, will help us to trace and track, you know, seed that are in circulation and in trade and even it will help us to uh, monitor the work of our own staff so this we are some of the things that we are doing uh, the plant variety protection is one of those innovations we are bringing and i want to put it on record that uh, the, the draft is now in the national assembly particularly in the house of representatives it has passed through the uh, second reading and the PV is very important because you discover that most of the varieties that we have today, the yields are very low. And we have the best genetics outside there, which has to be brought in. Also, there is a the need to protect uh, varieties. And also, the breeders have to be protected. Also, to, uh, they have to really have a lot of denominations for their inventions. Then, the C Codex. I mentioned earlier that uh, one of the challenges we have uh, is the issue of adulteration and faking of some of the varieties or some of the products and containers of some seed uh, enterprises. And uh, the stakeholders is actually very important because it gives the farmer and the stakeholders an opportunity to know the quality of seeds in those containers. Uh, henceforth, as sea containers, sea containers of seed enterprises will be carrying two different tags. One inside and the one outside. The one outside is going to be the sea codex. And the sea codex, uh, we have a silver uh, panel on the tag with a number which could be sent to a dedicated number which is going to be on the panel. And when that is done, you are going to get uh, the reply whether that the seed in that container is actually genuine or adulterated. And what you are going to see will be a, a whole lot of the quality of what is in that container. So it's actually a breakthrough, uh, uh, a breakthrough uh, application which we are prosecuting. Each bag of seed each, no matter how big, 50 kg, the small 2 kg, or whatever it is, is going to have codes on them. Like I said, unique codes, one lifespan. So what happens is that you scratch, and it says, yes, this is May seed, so so and so testing date, lifespan, so so and so, and all the major details are required that on the bag you get in the text message. So now the farmer can actually say, yes, I have the real product, as it were. If along the line somebody insert something that is not of the original stock. Let's say, for instance, a faker has waited, or maybe there is a small dealer who is dubious, who normally gets maybe 10 original bags, and then he brings 20 fake bags and mixes everything up. He now gets those 20 fake bags. The question is, how do you get codes to apply to those bags? You can't get codes. So you're going to have some bags with codes, some without codes. So the best thing is not to even bother to get those extra bags. So he's forced to sell the real thing now. But in a situation where the, the counterfeiter is quite incentivized and he goes ahead to probably duplicate the tags, we've applied to them, of course he can't duplicate the codes on those tags because they're unique and like I said, they have one lifespan. Once they're sent once, it's done. No doubt, the result of the collaborative effort within each unit is enormous and palpable. Farmers now share their joy and testimonies, so to speak, of the positive impact. The seed variety can help when it comes in because the seed variety we are having now are quick maturing, early maturing type of seeds we have. 
compared to the traditional seeds we've been using. The traditional seeds, just like we have here, takes about five, six months before maturing. But if you go to the early maturing, that is the seed, in, the one from NASC, NASC office, within three, four months, they are mature, ready for harvest. Before these things comes out. My profit, you don't increase because before you can get a four bucks, now I can get like a 10 bucks. My rice farm, as you see, it is uh, it's appearing good because I obtained it from a, a, a council where they have screened the rice from the companies and then they satisfy it before they gave it out to me to plant. In a hectare or two hectares, if you get two hectares, you hardly get uh, 100 kg, four bags. Uh, this, this, I'm talking in terms of bags. Uh, you hardly get four. But this one, if you plant uh, two hectares, you can get up to 12, 13. That is measuring 100 kg. In the end, it is a collaboration of intentional research and hard work of organizations like National Agricultural Seed Council and their partners to deliver the results of healthy seedlings for farmers, which by extension translates to healthy food production for a healthy Nigeria, Nigerians and for the global market.